excited about this video this week. It's all about well-being. I'm sharing elegant feminine strategies today on how to move through this holiday season and come out of it feeling incredible. Get a pen and paper because I want you to write these things down so that they are visible to you and you remember them. Let's get started with the first one. So if you've been around here a lot, you know that I speak a lot about feminine energy and that when we do things, we want to come to that being in our feminine energy, right? That allows this doingness to not feel so depleting, so exhausting. And instead, it adds a bit of playfulness, a bit of enjoyment to that doingness. And so that's what I want to really remind you of and to get you constantly thinking this month. How can I bring pleasure to this thing I have to do? Whether it's baking those cookies for your kid's school or cooking dinner for a dinner party or wrapping presents. I mean, there are so many things this month that we do that we don't do any other month and they all come together at the same time and add to our to-do list. And so if there's going to be more things on our to-do list, how do we bring more joy to them? Some ideas that I'm always sharing that make a huge difference, I know personally for me, is music. So there's a lot of music going on around this time, but pick one that's so enjoyable and calming to you. I'll put a couple of links in the description box below of some of my favorite non-vocal, just smooth, easy Christmas songs that are so relaxing. Another thing you really want to focus on is taking a stand for your well-being. This is what women with feminine confidence do. They take a stand for themselves, for their well-being, because they know that when they're filled up, when they're relaxed, they will come to their children with patience and love that they truly do want to come to them with. They will come to their partner with love, affection, even playfulness, when they are not depleted. And so they take a stand for it. And one of the best ways to recharge yourself is sleep. So make sure that you're getting some good night's sleeps. But if there's a lot of things and you're not getting enough sleep, really turn to meditation. And it is as simple as setting a timer on your phone and simply repeating a mantra. And it can be any mantra you want. I always recommend saying a mantra that you don't really know what it means so that your brain can't interact with it and start thinking like, for example, you choose the word peace. And so you're repeating peace, peace, peace inside, internally, silently. And inside your brain's going, you don't feel peace. You don't feel peace. You shouldn't even be sitting here. You've got 20 other things to do. Why are you, oh, maybe you should just stop after three minutes instead. Like, don't have a meaning to your mantra. It Trust me, this is the key to making it work. So for example, there's many that you can choose from, but there's one that I quite like called Aham. Aham, 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 Aham. And I'm repeating this silently inside. So I'm saying it out loud now for you so you can hear, but inside I'm repeating it silently. Some people like to do it out loud and they find that that works best for them. Personally, I have found that silently is most impactful as with most of my clients as well. So just sitting there, five, 10 minutes. I think 10 minutes is the sweet spot because it usually takes me about five minutes to just get to a point where I feel relaxed. And then I wanna feel relaxed for about five more minutes after that. So 10 minutes is the sweet spot, okay? So turn to meditation to refill your energy tank. And remember that when you return to the body inside, you're returning to source, life force energy. So if you want energy, go to the source. Let's go on to my next tip for wellness. We've all heard that exercising is good for us. I choose the word movement because I know that just simply when our body moves, it feels better. It releases a whole bunch of beautiful chemicals and I could go on and on, but I won't, okay? 
The thing is though, that there can be certain moments when too much movement is actually too much of a stress to your body. And it's actually beneficial if you maybe do less or a different kind of movement. Now remember, the holiday season is a time when we've got more things to do, we're busier than ever, and oftentimes in work, it can be the busiest time of the season. And so it is charged on every level. That's sending a lot of cortisol stress hormone through your body. If you think that going to the gym and running it out is gonna be the best thing for you, think twice. It's actually going to stress your body more. That goes for HIIT workouts. That even goes for a lot of strength training. That kind of movement or training is going to be too much for this already intense time. What your body actually needs to reduce the cortisol in these circumstances is slower movement. So walking, slow walk. We're not talking power walk here. We're talking a slow leisurely walk still burns calories, you're moving, you're just doing it at a slower, more relaxing state. Listen to a beautiful podcast, listen to music, or just listen to nothing at all but the silence. That's even better in nature. Or turn to yoga, slower yoga. I'm not talking power yoga, I'm talking slower hatha yoga, yin yoga, or just some shorter movements. 10 minute sequences instead of hour long sequences, okay? This will take the pressure off of your nervous system and allow it to rest and relax. That is what women who have feminine confidence do. They know that they must bring a whole lot of feminine, relaxing, soft energy to this very charged to-do list, masculine, energy season, okay? And my final most elegant tip yet, ladies, is the art of gracefully declining. It is not your duty to burn yourself out and overwhelm your nervous system by going to every single party or event that you are invited to. It's just not obligatory. And again, you have to take a stand for your well-being. Are there events you really want to go to? For example, if you have children, you're probably not going to say that you decline an invitation to the holiday concert that they're going to put on, right? That's an important event for your children. However, if your husband has two different gatherings, do you have to go to two of them? Do you have to go to all the work events or can you simply decline and say I'm busy on that day but I definitely can make that one and being busy means resting honestly you don't have to give the excuse or the reason that you can't decline you simply say I'm not able to attend that. Thank you so much for the invitation. Unfortunately, this time I'm not going to be able to attend. I hope you all have a fabulous time. Say hi to so-and-so for me. But that is a way to gracefully decline an invitation. I know that there used to be a time in my life where I used to feel I had to say yes to everything or I was rude right? And this is something that women have grown up with. We've got to be the good girl. We've got to be the polite girl. We've got to be the generous, volunteering, overgiver girl, because that is what we were told defines our worth, being worthy of love. It's not truth. Showing up when you have energy to be playful, showing up when you have energy to be warm with people, so that you can enjoy yourself fully is what it's all about. And so here I am giving you permission to gracefully decline. And again, remember, you do not need to give a reason. You simply say, unfortunately, I won't be able to join you this time. Have an absolutely wonderful time. So ladies, it's so important for me to empower you to know that this holiday season, you can actually come out of it feeling even more refreshed because you've been moving in a way that supports you, that you've been eating in a way that supports you, that you've been choosing 
in a way that supports you and that you've been doing things that actually fill you up and give you more vitality than depleting from you. And this is actually something that you could take into the new year with you and apply these feminine principles to the rest of your life. So on that note, I wish you an absolutely beautiful, beautiful holiday season. May you enjoy it with elegance, ease, and feminine energy. And I'll see you back with another empowering video. Love you so much.